Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode. Glad to have you here. Today, I'm going to be talking about, is the cryptocurrency market really a free market? If this is something you've been wondering about or you'd like to learn more about, I definitely encourage you to watch the entirety of this video. Some truth bombs will be dropped, not on Iran, uh, just in your ears uh, through this YouTube channel. That is not a bomb threat. Please don't ban me, YouTube. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. So right off the bat, I think it is awfully appropriate to start this video off with a definition of what is a free market. So it reads as follows. The in economics, a free market is a system in which the prices for goods and services are self-regulated by the open market and by consumers. In a free market, the laws and forces of supply and demand are free from any intervention by a government or other authority and from all forms of economic privilege, monopolies, and artificial scarcities. So... I'm going to talk about how I know that this cryptocurrency economy, this crypto market is a free market. It is still largely unregulated, which I think is a beautiful thing, especially if you are at all familiar with other heavily regulated markets like real estate, like the SNL market, like precious metals even, hello, London Fix, and what those regulations have done to those markets, not only in the US, but globally. If you're looking for a really good book to kick off this new year, it is still, you know, the first half of January, new resolution can still be set. Uh, anyway, I definitely highly recommend you look that you get the book, uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island, written by G. Edward Griffin. It's an excellent book that it takes like, you know, the typically very kind of dry uh, topics like the creation of the Federal Reserve, like what banks do to make money, the disgusting uh, ways that they get away with that. Um, and he takes it and he makes it really interesting, really readable. For example, the past two solid days, I've been reading it again. It is a really good book that you can read over and over again and really just solidify your position in this cryptocurrency space. Uh, highly recommend it to really understand what central banks really do, how they are not connected to the governments and you know their true motives and how they make money and who they're really servicing. Anyway, The Creature from Jekyll Island, highly recommend it. But really, it touches on regulations also, and basically how regulations don't exactly service the markets that they're trying to regulate. Uh, they don't actually stop bad businesses from occurring. In fact, most regulators probably like bad business because they rake in the money even more because they are, you know, handing out fines to be paid by the businesses to to still, you know, stay in the good graces of the regulators. Really, all you have to do is take a look at the housing market in 2006, 2007, 2008, what was happening between the banks and the regulators and the loans and how they were being classified and how everything was allowed, fully regulated, uh, and, you know, not exactly protecting the investor, protecting the citizens in that situation. Regulators are not the end-all, be-all hero uh, for investors or for people participating in any kind of a market. So this crypto market is still widely unregulated, point number one. If you're wondering why, definitely encourage you to watch this video until the end. It's not that long. And uh, yeah, definitely watch this video till the end. That's all I'm going to say. But there is an even bigger indicator that this whole cryptocurrency market is a free market. And that is the fact that there exists zero cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrency networks, or really any businesses revolving in this cryptocurrency space that are backed by the full faith and credit of any government, which is a beautiful thing, again, because that means that if any business in this space goes down, 
No government will step in to save the day to bail them out by allocating their citizens' tax dollars, whether it be directly or by the hidden tax that is inflation by having their central banks, the Federal Reserve, if it's the United States, the European Central Bank, if it's in Europe, uh, to print more money out of nothing, to dilute the money supply, to weaken the purchasing power of their fiat currency, all for the fact to save a business that was failing otherwise. Why? Because there is some boogeyman effect that like if this big business, if this big bank fails, it will cause some kind of catastrophic event that will trigger like huge economic uh, freakouts by people and, and everyone's going to die or, or everything is just going to go terribly. And so they must bail it out. They must do this. Uh, you know, without your vote, without your choice, uh, they're going to take your money and do what they want with it, whether again, be by directly allocating your tax dollars towards bailing out that company. You often to the tune of billions of dollars or just print more money, which they often do. Uh, and, and again, like I said, it weakens the purchasing power of your, of your dollar or whatever kind of current, current uh, fiat currency that you are more or less required to use based on why, because you were born there or because you live there. Anyway, in this cryptocurrency space, if a business or a network goes down, it's going to go down because it wasn't meeting the needs of the consumers in that market, which if you ascribe at all to the theory of Austrian economics, this should make a lot of sense. Um, you know, if, if you're supplying a a product or a service that people actually want and you're doing a good job as a business running it, allocating your profits, uh, you know, correctly, uh, then you will thrive. And if you do so poorly, you make poor decisions, you're not actually servicing your consumers, uh, you're going to fail. And that's the way I think it should be at least. Are you guys ready for the cherry on top? Don't worry. There's two cherries on top here, and there are two very distinct factors that will ensure that this cryptocurrency market will continue to be free market into the future. And that is a fact that oftentimes governments or really central banks will perform bailouts for a company, again, under the guise of protecting their citizens or protecting the economy, because if this one big business or in often the case of at least what we saw in 2008, big banks fail, it will cause like a domino effect uh, and it will lead to some kind of uh, catastrophic economic collapse. Here is a cherry. The very existence of cryptocurrencies completely undermines the position and the duties of the central bank. And so in that way, these guys are never going to want to try and keep a cryptocurrency or a cryptocurrency based business afloat unless it is somehow directly involved with that central bank, which is what we are seeing again with these uh, central bank stable coins. Uh, you know, it's like they're just trying to put a mask on. <laughs> and that's a completely different uh, video, by the way, of them entering this competition space of other free voluntary cryptocurrency systems. Good luck competing with that. Anyway, the very fact that this existence of cryptocurrencies undermines central banks and exactly why cryptocurrencies, by the way, that is why they were created was to undermine central banks and their bailouts and their terrible, terrible economic policies. Um, uh, yeah, they, they undermine it. So they will never be, you know, uh, surviving if they shouldn't be surviving. And ultimately, this ensures that this cryptocurrency space will continue to evolve and thrive based on what the consumers want. And, you know, I believe it will continue to evolve and be strengthened by this very fact. This second cherry is perhaps the best cherry of them all. And that is the fact that even if they wanted to, they cannot control a decentralized network or system. They are forced to sit on the sidelines and watch as this innovation advances far past what they were able to you know, accomplish in the past 
what, 107 years since the Federal Reserve was created. And this cryptocurrency space is only 11 years old. I don't know about you, but that is something I think is very much worth getting excited about. That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope that I inspired you a little bit, especially inspiring you to broaden, you know, your reading horizons. Definitely check out that book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. It will open your eyes in many ways in a good way get yourself informed and really understand why things are the way that they are, why we are in a debt-based economy, definitely worth understanding. And it will help you make much more sound uh, financial decisions yourself well into the future. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I appreciate it. If you leave a like, feel free to leave a comment. Love to have any kind of conversation going down there. In the meantime, you can always find uh, links to all the other platforms that I post this content to down below in the video description. I will be back again soon, probably going live again uh, in a few days. Anyway, you know where all my announcements will be going when I do go live. If you don't, again, check the links down below in the video description. Hope you guys have a good one. See you soon.